finally, 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 thank you, Candy. Thank you, Candy. A piece of old nasty piece of reality show that I'm actually excited to watch. Let's get on down. The girls are back. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Candy and the Gang. It is the OLG. Uh, Candy has done another spinoff. Listen, I think this is actually going to be her best spinoff to date over there on Bravo. Um, there's been quite a few spinoffs from Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I, I as much as I love Greg Leakes and Nene and their little thing, the little spinoff thing that Kim never watched an episode. Not a fan of hers. Never watched an episode. I've watched all the spinoffs that Candy has done. They're 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 pretty good. They're okay, you know, they're cool. But this one, I think she has a, a I think she did a good thing here. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Now, listen, anytime you pull together the OLG gang, we know it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Um, is some of it scripted? I think so. Is some of it... Well, see, that's the thing about scripting. You script some things, and then you put the people in these little situations, and then you don't know what you're going to get after that. I think these people are just messy enough to give us what it is that we need so we can proceed. Do you understand me? But I don't give a dang what you say or how you say it. If you bring in Aunt Nora, Aunt Bertha, and Mama Joyce, it's going to be reality TV gold. That's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Um, so here we go. So we got the OLG. And... Time flies. It's been in existence based five years. This place been over for five years. The general manager has left. Okay, so they've lost their general manager, and so they're kind of flying by the seats of their pants. Now, I'm just going to say this. Now, Miss Candy, you know that's what I be doing, girl. You know I be doing these little reviews and stuff, girl. And I wouldn't be me if I didn't go ahead and say, girl, you know for a fact that you stole. Kirk and Rashida's storyline from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. But it's cool because I love Kirk and Rashida. I love Storm and Candy. It's cool. But this whole thing with the, the, the young folks running the business at the restaurant, this is completely pulled from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta from the Frosts. Kirk and Rashida Frost, this is their storyline over there. Listen, it worked really well on uh, Love and Hip Hop because Love and Hip Hop lately has been and I'm you know I've been with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta from the beginning but it's just uh, but this that storyline kind of worked so listen I ain't mad at it at all like I said the pandemic did a whole a whole roundhouse kick on reality TV as far as I'm concerned that's coming from me from Spillable TV I feel like the pandemic, for some reason, it threw off what reality show was. It was already doing its thing and becoming kind of mundane and, and you know. But when the, the pandemic hit, it just, everything got off the rails. But I think you're on to something here. So like I said, this, this storyline belonged to Kirk and Rashida, who are actually friends of Todd and Candy. So it's no, no issue, no, you know, nothing like that. Everything's cool. They found something that works. Let's get into it. Five years there. The restaurant is is rolling. It basically, you know, the money's there. The money's there. The name is there. It is what it is. The money going to come. But the business itself is just a mess. I have a hard time believing that the business is really this raggedy. Um, but that's, you know what? It happens. And it seems as though... Candy and Todd are very busy and they don't come there very often. And then they lost their manager. So I could see where it may have actually just got a little out of hand. And I, and it makes me think back to 
when I was, it was, yeah, it was years and years ago when I actually did do some work um, in the Michael Kors section when Michael Kors first came to Macy's. And I was working in women's um, better dresses doing retail at Kaufman's. And when I got there, um, Kaufman's was a staple here in Pittsburgh. And it, you know, it's like long standing. The building itself, I believe, is actually a, a, um, a landmark here in downtown Pittsburgh. I think that building, I might be wrong, but I think the building itself is an actual landmark, but has a huge name here in the, this, in the town. It's been around since before I was around, okay? And I was shocked at how raggedy this business was and how it was running. And I'm like, I never thought this would be as unprofessional as it actually is. Um, and again, I learned that I really didn't care for retail all that much when it ain't my retail. So <laughs> that's that. But that's a whole other story for another time. And maybe I'll do a story time for you all, tell you all about that. But just, just know that I'm telling you, baby, it was raggedy. It was nothing that I thought it was going to be like. And that's what I saw here on this beginning part of Candy's show. I'm like, this business is trifling. Like you, girl, this is trifling. And then y'all work with food. But now, um, I remember some, you know, I, I do my reality thing. I deal with what's being shown. I don't really mess with what isn't being shown and what's in real time. Usually, but I remember stuff being said about Candy um, and OLG failing some, uh, you know, failing some little tests and things and, and, you know, really almost losing license and stuff. I remember hearing this stuff, but I remember she had it cleared up. So I said, yeah, I think there's some truth to it. And, and I think we put on some things. Some things are a little scripted, but that's okay. Come on, let's do it. So here it is. She goes on, she gets this guy named Philip. Philip is an old, cute old piece of something. You understand me? Beautiful teeth. I said, oh, Philip. All up in this area. Yeah, yeah Philip. Philip. Philip cute. But Philip is like a brick. He's like a brick. Um, his approach is very stern. His approach is 100% uh, business, 0% feeling. And they said it a few times through the, the 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 first episode. You know, he I don't think he, he I don't think he really care. He's like he's here to do a job, and I said, and that's really him, very much so. I'm here for it. I'm here for it because that at this point, when I said I said very loosely, this business is trifling. It needed that brick approach. Um, is it a little harsh? Yeah, it's gonna be a little harsh. Now. They had a, he actually did some stuff over at Blaze, which is their other place, their newer spot. And so he comes in as the director of operations. They slid Philip in a few days before. And it's like, okay, and he just came in and he just started working with them. Never did they know he was the going to be the director of operations over there. Don Juan is still on. Again, Don Juan is, well, as soon as you see Don Juan, we know we're getting good reality TV because Don Juan knows how to get it in, get get it done, give you what you need on the reality TV thing. And he's good at what he does with Candy. Their relationship, though Don has done things that got on our nerves in the past, when it comes to Candy, everybody need a friend like Don Juan. He is, when you say ride or die, Ride or die. You can't read him. Ride or die. He is good with candy. He is true. If there was a brother for her to have, other than the one that she actually had in real life, it would be Don Juan. Don Juan loves candy, and candy loves Don Juan. Ain't no question about that. So I was glad to see him. Um, he's still holding it down for her. So he's been kind of doing what he can do with them, but that really isn't his job, which is classic Don Juan. He's always thrown into cleaning up messes that really ain't his and still having to keep up his stuff with Candy, but he, he makes it work. First person we meet is Shondrika. Shondrika is the worst employee that I have ever seen anywhere, ever. 
She is ghetto fabulous, honey. Less fabulous, much, much ghetto. Pretty, pretty girl. And that's part of her problem, I believe. I think she's been told so many times, you pretty, that she all right. And here it comes. She's smart, too. She's smart, too, but she just ghetto. She's originally from Buffalo, New York, and she's a college graduate. This is why I'm being real hard with Shandrika. If you was a girl from just, you just from the hood, and you just don't know no better, Shandrika, you know better. You are a college graduate. Just the simple things. You know better, period. You know better. Just, I mean, anything you can think of, she's doing it. So that's why I said, I think some of this stuff is thrown in for us. Cut just late all the time and don't give a damn. Um, her attitude sucks. Oh my God, her attitude sucks. You know, it's a constant thing of like, oh, welcome. That's her favorite line, baby. Welcome to OLG. Welcome to old lady gang. Like it's the worst place in the world. And she's the hostess. Huh? She the first person you see when you come in. And her toot is, welcome to old lady gang. Every time something go wrong. Welcome to old lady gang. Yeah, that's what goes on here. Like the place just ain't shit. And then my question to you is, what did you go to school for? And you were a graduate. So some of that probably goes into the fact that you're a hostess at a restaurant. But are you mad at them or are you mad at you? You can get your shit together, sis. Beautiful girl. I don't think she's a dummy by any strange peace of mind do I think she's a dummy. I think you're ignorant. Ignorant as hell. And I couldn't have her for my business because if you didn't feel no better about my business like that, I don't want you showing up for my business. You throwing the business in the garbage every time you open your mouth. Who the hell ever heard of such? Horrible. She even got bad reviews. So that's why I said some of it I think is made up. They got bad reviews that reference back to her. Should not be working there at all. And they actually showed it. They showed like clippings of these bad reviews that literally go back to Shandrika. First person you see in the door on some bullshit. I said, oh my. Then we got Dominique. Dominique is the bartender. Everybody love a female bartender, okay? Everybody love a female bartender. And another girl, pretty girl. She's a dancer. She, she's, she has a magnet thing about her. Um, there's something about her that just kind of drew me to her when they even just showed her. And I was like, she groovy. She gro she's groovy. Now, she a little ghetto too. She a little ghetto too, but she's a dancer. She's a dancer. She's actually from Florida originally, and she bad. She just bad. I just think she groovy, and but she just a little ghetto. And she actually does her thing. She dances professionally. And they showed some clips of her. She bad. She bad. She do her thing. She, she can move. And she look really good. She look good. And she got that thing down. And like she said, I love it here because I can actually go out. She danced for Megan and Stallion and some other things. And then she was able to come back to work. You know, can't, Candy understands entertainment. So perfect fit. Perfect fit. But she not as bad as Shandrika. And the, and the two of them are like, like besties kind of there. They they really good together. Um, she is not as bad as Chandrika, but you can see the rub off of them with the bad attitude. And she says some things that just stuck out in my head. I said, uh -uh, baby, you couldn't work for me. You just could not. You couldn't. Um, next, we got Brandon. Brandon is like a stand-in manager. He's been there and he's been doing like the management role since the other manager left. Brandon got the most beautiful smile with his dark, dark skin. And yeah, he Brandon's a cutie. And he, Brandon got a little thing for Dominique. Okay. So Brandon got a little thing for Dominique. So we're going to deal with that somewhere down the road because you know that fraternizing is a complete no-no, but you can see it. Like, you can just see it. 
the thing that they said about him is that he doesn't actually have the background nor the experience. He should not be even in that management role, but he did them a solid by even being there and taking it on. So it, they just been kind of like rolling with it. So now he's going to be working directly up underneath Philip. You know what I mean? And they try to bring him up to speed, which is good, which is good. Um, and well, this is what I'm gathering. This is what we've seen here. So I'm saying that's good because again, you got to start somewhere. You say, how do people get into management positions? Child, luck sometimes, you know, luck sometimes. And this here would be like a luck thing. He didn't have what he needed to actually get into the role. He just kind of fell into the role. But after this, he'll just be management. You know, once he gets it down, that's it. He'll never be anything less than management or he a damn fool, you know, because time and tenure always stands up. So anyway, so but his biggest thing is that he just cute, cute and chocolate and got a thing for old uh, Dominique. OK, so. Here's where we, we got all our people. So them, oh, and then the, the the kitchen is pretty much ran. Melvin is definitely a family member. Most of the people in the kitchen are family members, okay? Most of the people in the kitchen are family members. Speaking of family members, the old girls, the OLG, how they play a part in the, the mess of the place too. When they come in, they upset the room because they come in on old lady gang shit. They just come in and just wreak havoc as well. So, but we won't get to that in a minute. So, they go in. Candy shows up. Toss shows up. Candy, she's sharp. Candy looks so good. She really does. She looks great. She looks great. She get body is snatched. I'm like, girl, you came through the pandemic. Bro, you came, you rolled in hot, Candy. She looks great. She really does. Came in, bad, these bad heels on. Well, she used to do work cute shit. But she came with these bad heels on, all that. And this is the thing I noticed right away. Candy and Todd. Candy is a dream as far as this restaurant goes. Todd is a goddamn nightmare, okay? So Candy has a loyalty thing, which we know how Candy is loyal to her people, her, her friends and things. She sees the people there as family. Todd sees them as numbers, Okay. So thank God for the collaboration of the two so the people don't get screwed. Because Todd's like, okay, we can just throw them away and we can just start a new. That's like his two. And Candy's like, well, I'm not. No, that's not where I'm at with the whole situation. So thank God for Candy because Todd will do y'all's ass. Anyway, just like most people would. But anyhow, so they go into the room, them, Philip, and Don Juan. And baby, it had everybody in there. They were already in the midst of a little meeting. Candy and Todd came in, baby. A hush fell across the room. And I had to laugh because Dominique was like, oh, somebody's getting fired, honey. <laughs> I said, see, that's when you know y'all are out of order from the door. And it also told, I mean, it told me they know they're out of order. They know they be screwing up. And they also, it told me, Todd and Candy have literally, yes, the business has gotten to a point where it kind of runs on autopilot, but you out of order because even though it runs on autopilot, you still got to stay on top of your business and y'all ass is no better than that. So just the, the two said, y'all off of what y'all doing. Everybody here is out of order. So as soon as they come in, Chandrika, now she's been there the longest. She's like the very first employee, okay? She's been there the longest. They say, you know, when Phillip's with them and everything, she's like, oh, I just don't like him. And she said, you know, ghetto, said it loud enough for the cameras to pick up, for him to be able to hear Dawn Warner. It was just disrespectful. It was very disrespectful. Um, they told him, you know, this is who he is. This is where he came from. We're bringing him in to help us get things back in line. There's going to be some changes made. He's going to be the one that helps us with these changes, that kind of thing. So they're like, it's right shortly before they open up. So it was a really short meeting, really to the point. And they're, everybody's looking like, 
Shit, I can't get on your P's and Q's because, see, he just slid up in here on us three days. He been sitting up here with us for like three days, and we just been raggedy as hell. So he know who doing what already with they dumb asses. Made perfect sense. That was a good call, Candy and Todd. Anyway, um, and I'm sure that was Philip's idea. Anyhow, right away, Shondrika and Philip need to have a conversation because they already been kind of not gelling, okay? So Don Juan pulls the two of them together and they're having this conversation and he's like, what's what's going on? You know what I mean? We Let's get this cleared up because he essentially is your boss at this point. So we got to get things, you know, where everybody's understanding where we all are. She ain't backing down. She talking to him just like, like they on the playground playing basketball. And he says, see, that's the thing I can't do. Like, that's what's not going to work. This this whole disrespectful thing. Whatever you give me is what I'm going to give you back. Uh, no, no, you're not. You know, and he told her, he said, yeah, I understand you were the first one. here. You've been here the longest out of everybody. But your problem is that you think you run things and you don't. And you don't. And she's still bucked him. She ended up turning around, walking away, and pulling Don Juan away from the, the, the meeting with the three of them. Did you just hear Don Juan, sweetheart, when he told you essentially, this is your new boss. This is who you are reporting to. You going to bust him up right there, and you going to overstep him right there in his face. You going to go straight on to Don Juan. You need to talk to Don Juan because you didn't got unhappy with what he had to say already. And he said, oh, I'm definitely not going to deal with that. So they dealt with that, and that was that, and that's what I got to see. And, and this, for me, with Philip, yes, he's a little stern, but this just came across. This was sexy to me. I said, ooh, Philip, watch yourself, honey. Let me come on down there to OLG, honey, and get me a chicken wing and a piece of Philip, honey. He, child, it was sexy, honey. He, that Philip is like a cement block, honey. He was so unmoved. I said, oh, all right. He told her, honey, hey, go on. They get everything started. They're working. As soon as they go to working, now she done went over there and do what ghetto girls do. Now she going to tell Dominique all about what it was. She talked to smack. And he says to her, really? Is this what we're going to do right now? Like you're literally discussing the little meeting that we had. And I'm standing here in the middle of the room. And you're acting like I'm not. Like, is this really what we're going to do? She said something else this morning. He said, you can just go home. Just go home. I said, girl, if that didn't turn the, if that turned the light switch on. See, but he didn't even play with her. Because see, he's been sizing you up for three days already. <laughs> Sent her ass home. I said, ooh. Baby. Hey, baby. I said, I bet everybody else start getting in line. Candy was like, wait, whoa. Why do you have to send her home? Candy, shh, stand down. Todd, see, Todd would have been fine if he had fired her. But <laughs> Candy was like, oh, my God. But, she, you know, she had to stand down. You got to let him do what he do. So I was like, wow. I didn't think that it was. I really didn't. I thought it was necessary because you know who you're dealing with. And I done told you. they This shit's ghetto. It really is. It's ghetto. It's like being on the playground. They got to get their handle on this right away. It is already just all right way out of order. So next thing we see, you know, they go on and do what they're doing. Um, there's a meeting over at old Aunt Nora's house. Y'all know I love me some Aunt Nora. Meeting over Aunt Nora's house. So Candy come in, got these real cute wedges on black and white, real cute. Child laughing at Joyce, talking about she's going to wear them wedges. I said, Joyce, if you don't stop this, honey, go ahead, Miss Joyce, honey, with yourself. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm just looking at them. They're all there. And I look at Aunt Bertha. Aunt Bertha has, she's lost some weight. And then I just kind of, I was looking at her skin. Her skin, she's very red. And I was looking, I kept looking at her and I said, did they got some wrong makeup on Aunt Bertha? Or did she, maybe did she get something done? I said, did she get some work done? Because she looked like maybe she got some work done. Either way, she definitely looks younger. She looks fresh. 
You know what I mean? That's what I said. Did they go pull in Bertha back some? But she looks like she feels good. And I'll leave that right there. She looks like she feels good. Um, but yeah, I noticed the redness in her face. And I said, I wonder if she got some work done. But she she looks younger. She looks younger. And I don't know if it's the weight loss or if it's the... However, don't really matter, really. She, she looked good. They all, they look good. I had no idea that Aunt Nora was over 80. I had no idea that Aunt Nora was over 80, which would mean that so is Bertha. I didn't think either one of them were that old. So, y'all better come on through with it. Anyway, so she said, I'm going to talk to you all separate, you know, about some things. Just try to get some information on how y'all feel about things down at the restaurant. And then I'm going to talk to y'all together, but I'm going to pull y'all separate. So she took them outside. She got Aunt Bertha first. Honey, listen, Aunt Bertha was right to the point like we know she is. Because, you know, she told, that's a scheme set up by Todd to come back with the bullshit. You know how Aunt Bertha <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aunt Bertha went out there and told her, she said, well, how do you feel about the, uh, you know, the kids that run the restaurant? Now? She said, none of them ain't worth a damn. None of them ain't worth a damn. And that's pretty much how her attitude stayed. Because they kept flipping back and forth between the three times that she sat with the three individual aunties. Um, or the two aunties and the mama. And child, Aunt Bertha ain't none of them worth a damn. And <laughs> she was over it, Okay. Mama Joyce said, Brandon, I don't think he cares. And she said she had heard him say one time that he really don't give a damn. And the thing is, I said, that's bad. But I could imagine that he probably did because that's something that I noticed. The don't care, the, oh, look this place, child. That whole, that was like an ongoing thing throughout the restaurant, and I'm like, honey, that I can't have nobody working for me, and that is their their feeling about my business. It's like, like it's some shit. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, this is terrible. It was hard to watch. I'm like, this is terrible. But anyway, Aunt Nora, child, Aunt Nora was like, mm, mm. that was where she was. And then we got some stuff we for. They said, Aunt Nora, now, girl, what are you doing, honey? You didn't come down there. They said, you know, like, there, when they come, they said, y'all come down and y'all be wreaking havoc. Y'all have to understand, these, y'all are older women, and these are some younger kids and stuff, but y'all are just wreaking havoc when y'all come down to the place, honey. And she said, you know, Aunt Nora, you threatening people and carrying you know? on? I said, Aunt Nora threatening folks. Really, Aunt Nora? <laughs> come on, Aunt Nora. But anyway, that's what she told him. She says, this is what I need from y'all. I need y'all to pretty much stay out of the kitchen. I need you to stay out of the kitchen. And I said, well, I, I don't know how that's going to happen. Because you remember, it's all their recipes and stuff. I get it. And and I'm try, I, I ain't going with that candy. I ain't going with them staying out the kitchen. Because most of what's in the kitchen is their offspring anyway. So I ain't going for that one. But okay, I'm, they said they're going to try, but they lying. They lying, baby. They gonna go. <laughs> they gonna go up in the kitchen, and they go. If shit ain't right, they gonna go off. And I'm here for that. And they said, you know, and y'all gotta chill. Like y'all have to chill with the back and forth with these people. Y'all have to. I said, yeah, but then at the same time, the people got to chill with. The, ain't no back and forth with them. Now, come on now, seriously, seriously. Uh. -uh. Anyway, but. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. Candy kind of made them aware of what it looks like. They don't give a damn, child. I love them girls, honey. They don't give a damn. <laughs> and it's so funny because when it comes to this restaurant, Joyce is actually the 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 cooler one. Honey, I, Aunt Nora is the one look like she's showing out. Aunt Nora, you showing yourself down to the to the OLG. <laughs> anyway, then after that, they decide. That they're going to do like a family reunion where they're going to bring together some people that used to work at a restaurant and have kind of moved on and doing whatever. And then they're going to put them in with the, the newer people. It's just going to be like a whole, just a a, a thing. They hired, pulled this guy named Torin. Torin's like an event planner who used to work there when they used to do like a every Friday night thing. I remember that. I remember that. I remember little video clips of her Friday night thing. Touring used to put that stuff together. As Candy was singing stuff sometime, and she'd have other people too. I remember that on YouTube. I remember seeing clips from those Friday nights. So they put the old crew and the new crew together. 
and uh, they were looking, looking. And Candy was, again, she wants her old folks and she wants to merge some of her new folks. Todd is over the new folks, pretty much. Like, really. I think Todd would be okay if he pitched all of them. That's just where Todd's at. But anyway, so Torin comes together and does the, the event. Really cute. It's like a, it's on, the restaurant's still open, but the thing is being held outside. Um, real cute. So, in that, then we end up meeting, um, his name is Brian? Yeah, Brian. Brian, I think he was a bartender too. I think he was a bartender and maybe have did like a little of hosting as well. But it was always about like his spirit and how, you know, he was real upbeat. So we met him and he has his own business. He come in giving out flyers because he got a business making some egg rolls. I said, what the hell? I said, okay. And then I looked at him and I was like, now, Brian, you, you tacky. You, you tacky, sis. You tacky. You come to the restaurant advertising your product. And not your product, your business. It'd been different if you came in and you advertised your product to them. You know, as maybe to get on the menu or something, but you're you doing a lot. Then we meet Richard. Now, Richard, he works over at Blaze. And he's a host over there. And, baby, they show like his little fashion. Room. Stay sharp. Stay fly. Stay fly. He's very polished. And he knows his shit, it seems, as far as hosting. Because right away, some of the things he says, I said, yeah, he knows. And he is a clear eye. Now, he's a Baltimore native. Okay? He's a Baltimore native. Um... And he just is very together. And I'm laughing because, you know, people say stuff about Baltimore and try to give that Baltimore's real ghetto and stuff. But Baltimore is very close to D.C. And our folks, our folks, you know the hour I'm talking about. The D.C. ones, they got a certain way of being. And as far as they're, they stay fly. That's just the way it is. The DC, the DC kids, they stay fly. And that's why I say he could be hit or miss. Be it as though he's from Baltimore. He could be really bout it, bout it, or he could be just close enough to DC to where he got that that swag to him. That is what I, I always consider the DMV. Um Child, I like the DC kids. I think the DC kids, they really bring something really interesting to the table. I had a really good Judy from DC back in the day. Child, missed that child, honey. But anyway, okay. So Rashard, I I like kind of I liked Rashard right from the door. Got it together. And he's like, I'll be happy to, you know, come back over and do some stuff. So he's gonna do some days over here. Um, and that's what he said. He said, I make less money over here than I will over there, but I'm glad to do it. I was like, listen, that okay, I get it. It just plays to who his character is and who he is and how they actually view him. Um, I don't know why I should be making less money over there. I probably should be making more. But, you know, that's, again, we know Candy's cheap, too. Now, that's one thing her and Todd got in together. They stay asses is cheap. Okay, let's go. Moving on. Um, so, we will move forward. The party was okay. We got to see that, you know, that's where we ran into the fact that Brandon and Miss Dominique got a little thing for each other. Um, this is going to be a problem. We're going to get them in trouble. But it was just so loose. It just, you you got to see everybody. And they just too comfortable at work. No matter, it, it's an at work party, but y'all drunk, shit. Y'all still at work. Drunk. I said, oof. Anyway, moving on. So, Shandrika and Richard are doing, like, this, this is his first day when he shows up. She's going to show him the ropes of what she does. And then he's going to really smoothly move in what he knows to what. Child, ain't nobody getting ready to smoothly do a damn thing with Shandrika. Shandrika, because she trifling when it comes to her work there. But she first day, she got to basically train him. She late. Well, she running late. She ended up getting there, like, exactly at the time they're opening. You're the hostess. You can't get there at the time that they open. So she was late. Anyway, moving on. And the first thing he said, I said, oh, yeah, see, he no business. He no business and skipped the bull crap. 
First thing he said, he said, wow, she's the worst hostess I've ever seen. She don't need to be no hostess. He said, and then the first thing you see, she got a piercing in her neck. And I'm like, small thing, but a big thing. We are at a food restaurant. Your appearance is an issue at a food restaurant. And yeah, things like piercings and different things like that. People are very funny. People are very fickle. So it just kind of is what it is. But he was actually right. Um, and I know some people are going to take to that and be like, James, listen, I know what I know, child. People are fickle. People are fickle about where they get their hair done, their, where they get their food at, all that. People are very fickle about who's working on them and what they look like and how they carry themselves. You go into, and the funny thing, nail salons, you go to nail salon, you, you, when you go in, and I'm going to say this, oh, I'm going to say this, this is so off. But you ever notice that the Asians, they don't never wear their stuff. I, I have yet to see an Asian person doing nails with acrylic overlay. Now, when you got like the uh, black girls and the white girls that do nails, they don't have their nails done. It's, it's like it's such a flip. Just like a lot of hairdressers' head be a mess and people let them do their hair. But I, I've never heard anybody say anything, but I always know the Asian folk don't wear no acrylic and stuff on their nails. They don't even, mm -mm. but my, like, black girls that I know to do nails, their nails be immaculate. I'll be like, girl, ain't you scared you're going to mess your nails up trying to do, mess with your drills and stuff? But that's just, I said it. I said it. But anyway, your appearance in some of these places, it, it, yeah, child, people don't want you working on them looking like a nightmare, trying to sell them a dream. Somebody want that? And I don't want to be eating, you got weird piercings and people funny about their food. They are. Anyway, moving on. So right away, just the, the restaurant itself, just chaos. And it's like a Saturday, just chaos. And then we run into child, a power outage. They are in Atlanta, Georgia. Are you kidding? So naturally within 15 minutes, child, everybody is glistening. And they just did not handle it well. It just, you could just see all of, everything that's being kind of covered up with the, the busyness of the restaurant and the good food and all this, all of that is now showing now, you know, because the lights have been turned on and it's like, oh, there's the roaches. You know what I mean? So, and I don't mean that literally, but that's that's kind of what it was. And I'm laughing. That's when I look at Philip. Philip's like, well, we got to make sure that people ain't getting up stiffing on their check. Damn the check. It's hot. It's hot. And I said, that's where we see that Philip don't, He's just business, 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 because dude, he's like, well, you got to get in there. And he's sending Brian, uh, Brandon, you got to like man the tables and try to get people's payment. I ain't going up in no restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia with the air and the lights off trying to ask nobody for no payment. I say what you need to be doing is preparing the... Uh, eat some of this cost is what you need to be doing. So I said, oh, Philip, mm -mm, you too stern, baby. You too stern, but you're still cute, though. But, uh-uh. So, a power outage is going on, and they got an ETA of three and a half hours, child. So, that's a whole mess. And then, like I said, here's Chandrika. Just a mess. She just, ain't even know she, talking about dropping the ball, she never even picked it up. She never even picked it up. She's like, mm Welcome to all the old lady gang. This happens all the time here. And they said that they do have outages every now and again. There's kind of it happens. Um, and then Todd comes on. I said, Todd, you cheap bastard. He said, they talk about a generator. He said, I know we probably should have a generator, but you know, the lights going off for an hour or two here and there. I could deal with that. You are in Atlanta, Georgia, Todd. So you like to do this. You don't like to do this. That ain't how you run business. That's an issue, Todd. You're too damn cheap. But that's who Todd is. Over the years, we felt Todd, Todd is cheap and shitty, tight as Fort Knox, honey. I said, oh, my God. So anyway, look, this is the things that actually went down. And we stopped there um, at this episode I enjoyed the episode. I really did. I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. 
I am wishing the best for this. With Todd and Candy, I am on board. I, well, you know, they, I'm a fan anyway. I fuss and do what I do. We've been together all this time, as long as they've been on TV. Well, I was with Real Housewives before Candy even got there. But listen, I'm a fan. I'm here for this. I am. And I'm really excited about this. And I hope it does well. And listen, I'm out of here for right now, but I will catch you all on the next episode. Later, y'all.